You know something, Charlie? There was more of him in that front stoop than in all the sales he ever made. He was so wonderful with his hands. He had the wrong dreams. All, all wrong. Don't say that. He never knew who he was. Nobody dares blame this man. You don't understand. Willie was a salesman. And for a salesman, there is no rock bottom to the life. Now, to minor matters. Are your parents living? I, I have lost both my parents. To lose one parent, Mr. Worthing, may be regarded as a misfortune. To lose both looks like carelessness. <laughs> <laughs> Who was your father? He was evidently a man of some wealth. Was he born in what the radical papers call the purple of commerce? Or did he rise through the ranks of the aristocracy? I'm afraid I really don't know. Uh, the fact is, Lady Bracknell, I said I have lost my parents. It would be nearer the truth to say that my parents seem to have lost me. I don't actually know who I am by birth. I was, well, I was found. <coughs> found? The, the, the late Mr. Thomas Cardew, an old gentleman of a very charitable and kindly disposition, found me and gave me the name of Worthing because he happened to have a first-class ticket for Worthing in his pocket at the time. Uh, Worthing is a place in Sussex. It's a seaside resort. Where did the charitable gentleman who had a first-class ticket to this seaside resort find you? In a handbag. <coughs> It seems very peculiar that you didn't know that your best friend was engaged to be married. The warehouse is where I work, not where I know things about people. You don't know things anywhere. You live in a dream. You manufacture illusions. Oh. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going to the movies. That's right. Now that you've had us make such fools of ourselves, the effort, the preparation, all the expense, the new floor lamp, the rug, the clothes for Laura, all for what? to entertain some other girl's fiancé. Go to the movies, go. Don't think about us. A mother deserted, an unmarried sister who's crippled and has no job. Don't let anything interfere with your selfish pleasure. Just go, go, go to the movies. All right, I will. And the more you shout at me about my selfish pleasure, the faster I'll go. And I won't go to the movies either. Go then. Then go to the moon, you selfish dreamer. Only people in books go out and teach beggars how to read and feed the sick peasants. Do you really think that's me? It could be you. You haven't even tried. I bet children would love you. <sighs> Don't lose heart. Elena, I know it's hard. You don't know what to do. But, but look, we're all doing it to each other. It's contagious. Uncle Vanya here is all but retired, it seems. And I'm no better. Here's me hiding in with both of you, avoiding work, looking for idle chat. And even the doctor. He's practically abandoned his practice. We used to be lucky to see him once a month. Now he's here every day. And forests be damned. I think you've put a spell on him, actually. Me? Absolutely. She's right. You know, I, I, I have a feeling you have mermaid blood in your veins. You lure sailors onto the rocks. And we're all drowning in your waters. So why don't you let yourself go for once in your oh, life? shut up, Vanya. Let yourself go, huh? Let yourself go for once in your life. Huh? Let yourself go. Let yourself go. <laughs> Or not to be. 
That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep, no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, to the consummation devoutly to be wished, to die. Sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream, aye, there's the rub, for in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause, there's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? <laughs>